Hey guys and gals, welcome to another edition of 543. I'm Josh Sickles alongside my esteemed colleague Vince Rodmer. This week we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the MLB pitchers, who you think is going to take on the Cy Young, and also the biggest headlines in college football. First, going to start off with another week in the NFL where some teams impressed and some teams, well, they laid an egg. We're going to start with the impressive teams. Vince, give me your most impressive 3 0 team. My most impressive 3 0 team is the New Orleans Saints. We saw the first two weeks when Drew Brees threw the ball all over the place to the tune nine touchdowns. We also saw it last week where they pounded the ball on the ground for 222 yards and three more touchdowns led by Pierre Thomas. So the Saints could win either way. Uh, their defense is much improved. They're up to uh, 12th in total defense, which is shocking. Uh, Drew Brees is leading the league in passer rating, 16 yards, and leading the league in touchdowns. Uh, so I see this as being a very viable team in the NFC. I think they could win the NFC this year. Uh, it's either going to be them or the Giants, so uh, that's my most impressive team. Well, they easily could be, but I mean, you know, come on, who have they really played yet other than maybe the Eagles, who was without Donovan McNabb? My team right now, though, is New York Jets, and you know, I hate to say it, but they're doing just enough to win. That Rex Ryan defense is really coming through in the clutch. So far in the, in the uh, first three weeks, they've only allowed 7, 9, and 17 points. Uh, which is you know, a staple of a Rex Ryan defense. Mark Sanchez is making just enough plays. And when you look at the defense individually, Darrell Rivas, a Pittsburgh native, has, come, has become one of the most elite shutdown corners uh, in the NFL as he was stopped in the first couple weeks, Andre Johnson and Randy Moss against the Patriots. And also Bart Scott, Jim Leonard, they followed Rex Ryan over from the Ra Baltimore Ravens. And for good reason, because they are putting up great numbers and having great seasons so far. To me, I still think the Patriots are the team to beat in the AFC East because, remember, the team's skill levels are not static. It's not going to stay like this throughout the year as it continually changes. But as of right now, the most impressive team to me is the Jets. New Orleans just hasn't shown me enough overall because they're facing NFC teams, which I think are a lower-quality team. Uh, I disagree with that. People are calling the Eagles Super Bowl contenders, and the Saints spanked them. They Come, them what? There was no Donovan points. McNabb. Donovan McNabb is a lousy quarterback. That doesn't matter. It would have been worse if Donovan McNabb would have played. You can't. You cannot make that argument. There is no way you can make that argument. I believe the Saints played the Eagles last year, and I believe the same thing happened. Yeah, Donovan unfortunately, McNabb. last year's record don't count for this year. It's the same team. It's not the same, same team. Same Saints team. It's not the same Saints team because Greg Williams has completely revamped that defense, and that's something that I will give them credit for. But in terms of the most impressive three and O team, I'm not buying it yet. But that's why we have different opinions. So now we'll have a different opinion about something else. A lot of teams have also, as I said earlier, have uh, not been so great this season. And some teams, some surprises, and some that we figured starting off 0-3. Vince, give me your uh, least impressive 0-3 team. Well, it's obviously got to be the Rams. Steven Jackson's a great player. But if you don't have a passing game and you don't have a defense, running the ball does not help you. They're 29th in passing yards, dead last in points. To top it all off, last week Mark Bolger got hurt. So at least Kyle Bowers are starting quarterback. Possibly. If Kyle Bower is your starting quarterback, you're in deep trouble. Yeah, I, you know, uh, the Rams, that's one thing I do agree with. My, my two teams, to me, the two teams that stand out as the worst so far are the Rams and also the Browns. And the Rams for the exact same reasons that Vince just mentioned. But for me, the Browns, because their starting quarterback didn't even get knocked out. Their starting quarterback got benched. Brady Quinn and Derek Anderson, there was a huge thing but in the preseason. Eric Mann Jr. refusing to give us an idea of who was going to start. And to be honest with you, I don't know why we cared that much because it didn't really matter. Both have been ineffective. Both have not uh, led a successful offense. Uh, both teams have little D. The Browns have shown zero life in the past two weeks, a little bit in the beginning of the season with the uh, Minnesota Vikings, who they just got outclassed by. You know, Butterfingers Braylon Edwards is doing his thing. Jamal Lewis is already hurt again. And like I said earlier, the D just cannot stop anybody. You know, they allow the Ravens to score, what, 37 last week, I think it was. So, you know, when I... When I when I pinpoint the worst team in the league, I, I got I to gotta go with the Browns. i just like to throw another team out there, the Washington Redskins, who barely got by the Rams, have been stuffed back-to-back -back weeks on fourth and goal with Clinton Portis. They lost the Lions, who lost 19 in a row, with a rookie quarterback and a rookie head coach. I think they could be right there if it wasn't for that favorable game against the Rams. That was a blatant shot against me, because I will admit that I'm a Redskins fan. I don't... I'm not defending what they do. I mean, I, they've been absolutely horrendous through the first three weeks. However, I would not consider them the worst team in the NFL. They're going to make some adjustments. They're still not going to be a very good team, uh, but they're going to squeak out a few more wins before the end of the season. Whereas, 
the Rams and the Browns are right now looking in serious danger of uh, matching what the Lions were able to do last year. But let's go. Obviously, a lot of impressive people throughout the first three weeks, and uh, the MVP race is far off as of whether or not we're going to find out who wins it. But as of right now, three weeks into the season, Vince, who is your NFL MVP? My MVP is Peyton Manning. Fourth in completion percentage, second in yards, second in passer rating, second in touchdowns. He's on a 3-0 team that's obviously not going to slow down anytime soon. They're, they're probably also very disappointed in how last year ended with the loss to the San Diego Chargers. And I think they'll atone that this year in the playoffs. I think Peyton Manning's fourth MVP is on his way. You could also say the same thing about Drew Brees, but he doesn't have the track record Peyton Manning has. I think, you know, in all honesty for me, the MVP race right now, well, first of all, you can't say an MVP within three weeks of the season. There's a reason. It's just like you can't say a Super Bowl champion within three weeks of the season. Nothing's happened yet. But the thing that you're looking at right now and now I'm looking at is stats and who's leading their team and who's, you know, who's really putting on an offensive showing. And for me, the two guys, I would give a co-MVP to Manning and Breeze, but to counter Vince, and when you heard a lot about Manning, you heard a lot about second in yards, second in touchdowns, second in passer rating. Right now, Drew Brees is first in passer rating and first in touchdowns. Yeah, he has less yards, but that's because they've been up for a majority of the games they've been in, allowing them to run the ball more. You know, last week he had... I think uh, uh, his low of the season. I don't. Did he eclipse 200 yards last week? I think he was about 228. He was about 228, which is which is very low for for Drew Brees. But they've been in games where they haven't had to throw the ball all over the place. Whereas Peyton Manning has been in a few dog fights, uh, like the Miami game, where he's had the opportunity to throw more often. So he Manning does have about 140 more yards. But to me, they're the exact same quarterback right now. Just. Uh, Brees' team has been more impressive than Manning's team overall, so I would give the edge to Brees, but that's just me personally. I think you could also go to the co-MVPs there because they are the two best quarterbacks They're basically the, the same quarterback. When you line up their stats, Brees, 69 complete, 69.1 completion percentage, Manning 68.8. Brees, 841 yards, Manning 983 yards. Uh, Brees, 9 touchdowns, 2 interceptions, Manning 7 touchdowns, 2 interceptions. Quarterback rating, 118.1 for Brees, 117.7 for Manning. They're the exact same quarterback right now, just a little different. So it's going to go to the guy with a better team, the better defense, and that's Peyton Manning. Well, that's your opinion right now. However, regardless, nothing's going to matter because it's only week three of the season. And number two, I would disagree on that. But we'll leave that debate for another day as let's go – 